are wheel cleaner. Let me ask you this. Are you using the right tool or are you just a tool using the wrong tool? Do you even know what a tool is? You know what a tool is. Those are the guys at the gym that, well, you know, they're just tools or the guys you see driving on the road that, well, they're driving like a tool. That's not a good tool to be. What I'm talking about is the tangible tool, specifically in this moment, a tool that will make you more efficient, more effective. Why would you possibly want to be those two things? Well, it has to do with money. In the world of professional detailing, which is the world that I'm involved with, time really is money. So I'm forever, and this is part of my endless frustrations, is forever having to go outside of my industry in order to find the right tool. Have you ever wondered why mechanics have so many darn tools? Do they really need 100,000 tools in order to get the job done? Well, the simple answer is yes. Now, while I accept that it's a certain badge of honor to have this vast array of tools because then it's almost power of suggestion. Like, hey, I've got not only Snap-on tools, if that happens to be your brand of choice and you can afford it, but I've got 100,000 tools. That must mean that I am the best mechanic in the shop. I get that part, but the reality is, is that any mechanic that has to perform at a professional level, they know that the right tool can make or break their world. When you're presented with that one job that is such frustration, but you have that secret tool that's gonna make or break your world, it's like, hell yes, sign me up, I need that tool. Yes, I only use it once a year, but I need that tool when that job arises and I need to perform and I need to make money doing it. It's one thing to be a driveway detailer and have an entire weekend to spend on your car detailing it, but let me ask you this, would you rather be out driving on the road on your sick ass, clean, detailed car, or would you rather consume an entire weekend trying to get there? I myself would rather drive that detailed out car rather than consuming two solid days of my weekend in order to do it. Efficiency and effectiveness. Time really is money. I find it forever perplexing that the industry is forever coming out with yet another great, fabulous product, and yet they don't come out with the right tool that's actually going to perform, especially as a professional detail teller where time really is money. I don't have time to waste. Time is money. I've got to learn the most effective and efficient ways in order to do any task that I'm presented with. In this case, it's cleaning a wheel. I get it. There's plenty of guys that need an excuse to get out of the house, away from their wifey because she's driving them crazy. Yes, stereotypes exist for a reason, folks, but I'm not one of those guys. I want to cut to the chase, get the job done so I can enjoy my freshly clean and detailed car. Many of you likely are familiar with this Speedmaster wheel brush. Very effective, one of my favorite tools in which to clean the specifically parts of the intricate spokes and the wheel barrel themselves. The problem with this is two parts. One, on really wide wheels, it may not be long enough to reach the innermost part of the wheel barrel. Secondly, the actual diameter of the wheel brush. For example, because these brushes, the diameter of this is, I would say it's a, about five, six inches. When you try to wedge that between the brake caliper and the outside of the wheel barrel, it's a pretty tight fit. Now on many performance vehicles, that tolerance, that distance is, is extremely tight. Therefore, I had to fabricate my own wheel brush that has smaller bristle, as in a smaller bristle diameter, as well as a very small shaft. Boy, I could go in a lot of really bad directions with that one word, could I not? But I won't. So this has a very small diameter as far as the shaft size goes, which means that I can get this in between the brake caliper and the wheel itself without having to move the wheel to find additional clearance. So let's move this out on the driveway. Let's get started. I'm gonna address those four specific areas, the right tools that I use, and how I've had to go once again out of my own industry and break the rules and finding the most efficient and effective and safe tool in which to accomplish the job. 
And here we are in position to clean the front wheels. And by the way, the front wheels will present the most challenging of the project. Why? Because your car does most of its stopping power with the front wheels. Therefore, they will become the dirtiest, especially on foreign cars. They tend to sling and throw way more brake dust than domestic cars. Do you see that assembly there? Who would ever think you would need that many tools, brushes, just to clean a damned wheel? Well, let me explain that. When it comes to cleaning a wheel, now I'm not including the tire, I'm literally talking about the wheel itself. I'm gonna break it down into four sections. We've got the face of the wheel, we've got the lug nut areas, we've got the inside, which is called the wheel barrel, inside of the wheel, and then we've got the brake caliper. Now, when it comes to a performance vehicle like this, often the brake calipers, that's the part that grabs the brake rotor in order to stop the car, they will be powder coated. Often they're colored differently than the rest of the car so they stand out. Who wants a dirty brake caliper? Hey, I want a dirty brake caliper, said no one ever, especially not myself. So while you may think that one tool like this Speedmaster wheel brush can accomplish everything, there's certain limitations. Everything has its pros and cons. There's always trade-offs as I like to say. One of the key problems with a performance vehicle is right inside there. You see the distance between the blue brake caliper and the wheel barrel? It's a pretty tight fit. Some of those brushes will not fit in there. So in order for thorough, complete cleaning, you have to rotate the wheel. And it is for that exact reason that I have ventured outside once again to break the rules and find tools from other industries that I can adapt to the world of car care in order to be the most efficient and most effective as well as the safest way to do a job or a task. Regardless of the wheel cleaner that you choose, the steps are mostly the same. My rule is that you always read the manufacturer's label first for instructions. Learn their rules because they're the ones that develop the product. Then you can break the rules or tweak it based on your unique situations. For example, am I working in direct sunlight? Am I not? Is it a hot day versus a cold day? Why does that matter? Well, because the product will tend to to evaporate or dry up sooner than later based on the temperature. Most products have some type of chemical to it. Now those chemicals, as long as they stay wet, they will continue to react to the other surfaces, in this case, brake dust and dirt. When it dries, you have to reactivate it. So the directions generally will say, do not allow the product to dry completely. This means that you will be required to manage the moment, manage your product, and that takes some finessing, especially when it comes to a wheel. As a rule, every retail product will have its own unique sprayer. And what I mean by that is that generally there's gonna be an off button. So you can swing this around and it will adjust the spray pattern. As a rule, there will be two spray patterns you can choose from. One is a more concentrated versus a fanned out spray pattern. That's where you decide what the winning balance is for you. I'm gonna go, now this is how I clean wheels. Because I don't soak the car down and get it all saturated with tons of water first, I know that the second that I introduce water to this chemical, it's gonna automatically dilute the chemical. Now Adam's wheel cleaner, it specifies that you pre-moisten, boy, there's a word that ought to be stricken from the English language, moist as in moisten. I don't know why I find that disturbing. Sorry for the sidebar. Adam's wheel cleaner suggests you get the, the wheel wet, then you spray the wheel cleaner on. That might be their solution as to kind of a, a generic dilution formulation. I have no idea, that's just what the directions say. So with that said, even though that's not what I do, because I want the chemical to be able to react very specifically to the dust, the brake dust, the dirt, and have it react without being diluted with the water first. So my rule is that I'm gonna spray the wheel with the chemical or the wheel cleaner first, then I'm gonna agitate, then I'm gonna hose it down. Adams, they go kind of counter to the traditional accepted way. So in fairness to Adams, I'm gonna follow their rules. Now what I do, because I am used to managing the world of Southern California, specifically the weather, and that has to do with the temperature. Let me add that I always work on a cool to warm wheel. How do you determine that? Well, if I can put my hand, my bare hand on the wheel, and I don't feel that it's ever gonna get burned and I can leave it there indefinitely, I consider that a warm wheel, preferably a cool wheel, 
so I'm not dealing with the warm wheel accelerating the way this dries up. In case you're wondering why I have two types of gloves on, well, this is for protection because I don't want those chemicals going into my body. Now, if I really wanted to be cool, cool, I would go with the black glove. If I wanted to be economical, I would just go with the glove that I buy at Costco that's cheaper than this glove. But I get it, this glove looks way cooler, right? See how much more professional I look when I have the black glove versus the, I don't know what color you call that, white? What, what, would you, what color would you call that, Sean? White-ish? I'm not sure. White or chalk, maybe? Chalk? We could go chalk. That sounds better than white. So I break it down four parts of the wheel, the face, the lug nuts, the barrel, and the brake caliper. Yes, you will need a dedicated brush if you want optimum results. I start with the inside of the wheel barrel. Why do I start there? Because it's the most shaded area and it's gonna be the most difficult to really finesse and make sure I get it clean because it's round. So as I look down at this way, I only see half of the wheel. I have to do this in order to see the rest of the wheel. And I know when I do this, you also see that cool little bald spot that's happening on my head. So I'm gonna pre-wet the wheel. Doing my best to keep the water contained to just the wheelbarrow itself. Hmm. You see, can you smell that? Of course you can't smell it because you're out in viewer land, but it smells like the Iron X. It's horrid. It's got this like rotten egg smell. So there's people out there that will say like, oh, Darren, you're laying your brushes right on the ground. You're going to pick up dirt, transfer it to the wheel brush. Well, these are nylon brushes. It's not like a microfiber cloth that is going to naturally pick up dirt and debris. It's, it's actually very safe. Plus the ground I'm working at, it's on cement versus asphalt. So these are nuances that I know as a professional just become a non-issue. This has been the tool that I have fabricated myself in order to clean the wheelbarrows because often what is a problem is the tolerance or the clearance between the brake caliper and the wheel itself is so tight that these traditional brushes, once you wedge them in there, they just don't fit. Also, these little tips that are meant to protect the wheel from getting scratched up will often come off prematurely and then you're screwed because now you've got metal tip. I fabricated my own, but once again, I've gone outside the industry to find these vent brushes that I found very effective because they have a smaller diameter, plus the brushes themselves are smaller in di diameter, so I can wedge them into tighter areas better. They're also longer for those extra deep wheels on the performance types of cars. Now, what's unique about the Adams wheel cleaner, which is really not that unique to the world of wheel cleaners, is that it chemically reacts to the brake dust, and so it starts changing it purple. They call this bleeding, which is just a glorified way of, you know, labeling something. Here's two very top popular types of wheel cleaner brushes. We've got the Speedmaster and the other one, which you could probably find on my channel or my website. As a rule, always look below in the description box. There's gonna be links to my website so you can get these themselves. Uh, actually, Sean, who is uh, the cameraman today, uh, Blue Tech Mobile Detailing, brought this with them. I generally default to this, as well as these other brushes. So I'm gonna go with this one because it's thinner, it's smaller, and I think it will be a little more effective in this moment. Let's see. Yeah, see, it actually fits in between. And now this car particularly but has both a heat shrouding in the back as well as a tight tolerance between the wheel and the caliper. But this brush itself actually does fit. It's not overly deep. So I kind of, in order to get the very far back, I have to reach in here. And now I'm gonna start chewing up my knuckles as I beat them against the outside of the, uh, the wheel. Also, the problem with these, you'll notice how big these bristles are and compared to this, compared to that, is that as you pull the brush out, those bristles flick back at you and they're gonna sling all this b dirty brake dust and chemicals right at your face and it's gonna, it's gonna speckle you like there's no tomorrow. That's the trade-off. They're safe, they're effective, they're good to use, 
but that's the trade-off. That's where I default to one of these. Now, these are my latest tools, and you can find these on my website. They've got soft bristles. There's enough bristles to be very effective. It's got a protected tip, but it's very long. I know I can fit it into tight places. Plus, I know I'm not gonna have to rack my knuckles in trying to get it back there far enough because I can just do this, and it will reach the further back. Often people overthink wheel cleaning because they have allowed the brake dust to accumulate for years and now they wanna come in with unrealistic expectations and think that there's gonna be some magical chemical or some magical brush that's gonna instantly just break that down into perfection. So if it's, if it's a wheel like this one that I maintain regularly, consistently, I don't have to overthink any part of this equation. Yes, you know, I need to think about it enough to be effective and efficient, but I don't have to overthink it because I'm not trying to break down, no pun intended, I'm not trying to break down years of accumulated brake dust. So it's actually very straightforward. But because I'm talking so much, I need to reactivate this and make sure it doesn't dry on me. The trade-off with this is because it's long, it's gonna be more flexible. Now, some of you might think that's a good thing, some of you may not. Once again, I'm not working with years of accumulated brake dust. I just want this to be able to slide all the way through. Manually agitate that wheel cleaner. And the trade-off with this in a good way is it doesn't have those really long bristles so I'm not getting a lot of sling back into my face and my eyes. What I really should be wearing is some safety goggles. Notice that I am not. So there I have now agitated. Now I'm gonna rinse it. I'm gonna be careful because this is a metal nozzle. I don't wanna chip my wheel. Yes, it used to have a little rubber grommet on it for added protection. No longer does it because it doesn't last and it comes off. So now my barrel on the inside is done. It's that straightforward. I'm gonna change this spray pattern to a more wide spray pattern. And now I'm gonna go in and clean the other areas. Now, while this brush or one of these brushes is effective for cleaning the wheel barrels, it's not necessarily effective for one of the elements or components of this wheel cleaning process, which is the brake caliper. Let me complicate the area even further. These are what's called bottle brushes. Once again, I went outside the area. Why do I use bottle brushes? Well, this bottle brush actually is thin enough where it's effective on a lot of wheels to clean the inside of the wheel barrel like that but it's got a, a wider or a greater diameter size here so it will not be able to wedge itself between the brake caliper and the wheel so what I use this for specifically after I've cleaned the wheel barrels is now I come in and I use it to clean the brake caliper itself because it has not only bristles that stick out from the top so I can actually clean something head-on like that but it's got just a nice contained brush pattern that seems to be a winning combination when it comes to cleaning brake calipers because brake calipers they do have many surface areas intricacies to them so this is what I'm going to use and now I've just cl cleaned the caliper I don't necessarily going to rinse it yet can you see how it's bleeding out it's got this cool maroon reddish type of effect to it. Notice also that I have now gone through half of the bottle. This is all about managing your world. You will use a lot of wheel cleaner because I want to make sure it stays active. This is also effective, for example, on this particular wheel. Every wheel is unique. It's got these cutouts. So this bottle brush is ideal for those cutouts. Now I'm gonna to switch to this, which is a boar's head, and boar's bristles, literally boar as in pig, as in to bow, bovine, I think is the technical name. When these get wet, they have actually soften up. It's kind of unique. It's, it's a, a natural bristle. It's not a synthetic, but this is good for getting inside the lug nuts of the wheel. Now it comes to the rest of the face. This is where I'm gonna reach for a brush like this. Notice the long bristles. This will be flinging stuff around and you have to learn how to manage that. Now, because of the unique style of this wheel, I'm gonna default to this brush here because now I can just get it much easier and quicker than I can with the traditional wheel brush that's used or is ideal for the face of the wheel. I'm gonna go through here. You can see all that purple bleeding effect. 
That poor wheel, it's bleeding all over the place. I should probably apply a tourniquet to it. Now I've got, now this wheel itself has very limited actual face to it. Now I'm brushing down so that all that splatter hits the ground, not my face. I like this nozzle because it's adjustable right at my grip rather than having to sit here and tweak this and it all, then only holds one position. I like being able to adjust the pattern right at the tip like that. So if I want a nice sharp stream, I've got one. Now you'll notice I'm not shooting the water up like that because I don't want to get the rest of the car wet during this process. And with that said, is no matter how careful I am, I'm going to get some overspray. So I keep a separate cloth just to gently wipe this based on your specific steps of engagement with cleaning your car. But because the spray pattern is shooting up automatically, I know that when I'm holding it like this, it's going to shoot up and get these areas under here. But I'm going to double check and I'm going to look under here to see and verify. But because I can adjust it right at the trigger, I can use just a very small amount of water without creating a lot of overspray and get these areas up underneath here. So that's the wheel. Now the automatic ripple effect is like, well wait, what about the sidewall? Well that's where I'm going to reach for a separate product. This is an alkaline based, actually an eco-friendly product called Simple Green. I use it straight, meaning I don't dilute it. And now I reach for yet another brush. This is my tire sidewall brush. And I'm going to scrub, and I save this for the very end. The wheel and tire is now completely wet. I accept that. It's not gonna make or break my world. As far as cleaning the sidewall, I always use a water-based tire dressing because each time I clean the tire, I wanna be able to break that down very easily before a new application of fresh dressing. Now I hose it off. The next bleeding effect would be the wheel wells. I've got a separate video for that, but I've got some overspray. So once again, I'm gonna take my microfiber Gently wipe that so it does not water spot up. Now I have a clean wheel, but the fun will continue, folks. Hey guys, what do you think about the cool earmuffs? Okay, I like to practice safe blowing. Blowing? What do you mean blowing? What are you gonna do, blow that wheel? Yeah, I am. It's called a leaf blower. Why do I use a leaf blower? Because it's uh, a no-brainer. I have access to electricity wherever I'm at. This produces a large volume of air. It's concentrated. It's also got this wand on it, so I'm moving my arm less frequently. I just find it the winning balance. So if you strategize, your wheel is wet. If you blow it, now you're going to have the ability to completely eliminate any water spotting or significantly reduce them. things I want to draw attention to is in that sped up um, part of the video I am literally touching the wheel with the tip of the leaf blower that is plastic this is clear coated it's subtle it's not gonna do any damage for all you keyboard jockeys that want to overly scrutinize every single moment of the moment so I'm fully aware of it no matter how much you blow it's like it's just there's always going to be drips I'm focused on getting the bulk Basically, I'm focused on getting that 98% right. Now at this point, based on your detailing process, like are you gonna go into a full detail? Are you just performing a wash? I'm gonna mop up with one of my, what I call disposable microfiber cloths, and I'm just gonna mop up any standing pools, excess water. So if you're a fanatic like I am about the details, and I've got like medium to large hands, and I know that's relative. As a rule, I always take a large glove. So if I want to, which I do, because I want to be able to wipe down the surface of the wheelbarrow 
for absolute perfection. My hand's not gonna fit there. So what you can do is take your brush, wrap your microfiber cloth around it, and now guess what? Instead of cleaning it, now you're just drying it off, and this is where you have to use some strategy so you got the tip covered, not because it's unsafe, because there's already a rubber grommet there, but you just wanna be able to get the, the um, wheelbarrow itself. And yes, it's a little tricky, but once again, perfection always comes at a cost. And you'll see that as I pull this out, I'm still pulling up dirt. And that's the problem with the inside of the wheelbarrows. Unless you're willing to pull the wheel off, it is very difficult to get it absolutely perfect. So this is where you have to finesse the moment. And if you get the cloth just right, you can finesse it without consuming too much of your time. So this is what I'm doing here. And yes, it's dragging along the ground, but this is where I've already scoped out my area. There's not a bunch of loose gravel or anything like that. So now I have a wheel that is essentially 99% perfect. When I'm done with the rest of the wash job or the detail job, I'm gonna move the vehicle so I can see the wheel from a different angle. Really what I do is I just rotate the, the, the car or move the car forward or back so the wheel is 180 degree, 180 degree difference, which means that the top now becomes the bottom. So how I can scrutinize the bottom half of the wheel, now when I move it, I can scrutinize the rest of the wheel. That is what will be required if you want true perfection. You can also scrutinize the brake caliper inside the lug nuts now that everything's dry. And I have what I would call an acceptable wheel that is really detailed out. I'm gonna bring you in and show you how the Adams wheel cleaner performed. What my eyes are seeing, I'm to give it an absolutely thumbs up. The problem is, is I consumed so much of the wheel cleaner that if I'm detailing out a wheel like I did here, it becomes economically unfriendly. That's why I don't overthink it and I will default to something that's a little more economically friendly and that will be saved for another video. Let's pull in so you can see as much as possible the inside of the wheelbarrow that we have a very clean and detailed wheel. I never know how much of this is gonna show up on camera. I'm just hoping that this is showing up. There I've got my badass M series brake caliper that is powder coated. Actually, it looks like it's a metallic blue. Got the little M series logo on it. I would say we have success. And I'm gonna say thumbs up to Adam's wheel cleaner. And by the way, I know Adam personally. That dude in my world is a stud. He is a rock star. Why do I say that about Adam's? Because his integrity and his passion. So not only does he produce really, really good products, but he's also full of integrity and passion. So to me, that's a winning combination. We'll cut it there. Hope you learned something. By all means, if you like what you see, subscribe. I'd like to thank Sean of Blue Tech Mobile Detailing for being the camera guy today. For his input, helps me out. Uh, you can check out his website. There's always gonna be links at the description box or the show more box below every video. By all means, subscribe. And if you hit the little bell icon when you hit subscribe, that will make sure that you get any alert when I've posted a new video. Until then, we'll see you on the next video.